This video demonstrates a few functions from the C string library. So we've included the C string library here. We have a program that takes in a phone number and there's the input phone number and what we want to output are only the digits. And we do that by looping through the C string until we come across the null character. And while we're looping through the C string, if the current character is between character 0 and character 9, then we output. Let's take a look at how that works. There we go, we have the digits outputted. 1-800-555-2106 from the input C string. So the first function will be the string length function. And what that does is it returns the length of the C string. The first function we're going to look at is the C string function, uh, string length, S-T-R-L-E-N. You pass in a character array, and what is returned is the length of that character array. And the length will be counting up to the null character. So in the case of this C string, even though the character array is of size 20, what will be returned is the C string length, which is 16. So let's just demonstrate that to make sure that's working correctly. So I call the function, the function name is string length, and I pass the parameter user num. Let's take a look at how that prints. 16, which is right because there are 16 characters in this C string. Okay, now we can use that string length in our loop, and this is to make the loop more consistent with the other ways we use the for loop. Usually we have the starting value, you know, i equal to 0 for example, and then we continue looping while i is less than some number, or we continue looping while i is greater than some number. And so we can reproduce that, so we can continue going while i is less than the length of user num. Let's go ahead and compile. We have a warning on line 14 of a comparison between assigned and an unsigned integer. So string length, the length of the string, cannot be negative. It can only be 0 or it can be a positive number. And so string length is actually returning an unsigned integer. And so what we'll do is also make our i unsigned, our index, which is fine because our index does not need to be negative. It just needs to be 0 or positive. Let's compile. No warnings and run the program and we have output just the digits. Okay, I'm going to give another example and just delete this program and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write a program that takes in a person's name and then it will output their nickname and we're going to put that nickname into a separate C string and then I'll put that new C string. So we'll have uh, someone's name, we'll say uh, we'll give them 10 characters and we'll have the name be Alexander. Okay, and so we can just take a look at what that looks like when we output. Oh, we do have an error and it's, oh, it's because we have name 1. So I'm going to just go ahead and add a 1 to the output and recompile and execute. And there we go, Alexander. And what we're going to want to do is create the nickname for number one here for the first one and the nickname I'll initialize to be blank but what we're gonna want to put inside the nickname will just be Alex because a, a typical nickname for someone named Alexander is just Alex so we have a warning when I compile and that we have an unused variable nickname and that's true so how do we well actually we should output the nickname there we go. Nickname 1. That's a good idea. So we can see how that's working. We can compile. No warnings. We execute so we get Alexander and then blank. That's fine. Alright, so how do we copy in the nickname? Well, we'll start off by just trying to get the name to pass into nickname and then we'll worry about cutting out unnecessary letters. And when I try assigning the name to the nickname, we get an error which is forbidding the assignment of arrays. So we do have these two arrays and I'm trying to assign an array to another array. But that's not really what I'm trying to do. Each array inhabits its own part of memory. And so I'm trying to assign one piece of memory to another piece of memory.
but what I'm wanting to do is maintain a separate location in memory for nickname and I want to maintain another location in memory for name and I just want to copy over the contents of name one the array of name one into the contents of nickname so that's not the way to do this what about if I just try putting in Alexander I'll just try copying in Alexander so that's a problem as well why well, we've already initialized nickname one and so we're not allowed to reassign another string literal to our C string. Okay, so what other options do we have? Well, we could go character by character. So one character at a time. We try assigning, and before I go too far, I'm going to try compiling and see if this method is working all right. And it is. And there we go. We're starting to get the nickname copied over. And so I can continue doing this for the full length of Alexander, which is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can have Alexander. And then, of course, we need to have the null character to tell the program we have reached the end of the C string. OK. So there we go. We can get Alexander copied over. That's one way to do it. Another way is to use the function string copy. String copy takes in two parameters. The first parameter will be the destination. So in this case, nickname is the destination. And then the second parameter is the source. So we're going to, the source will be name. So we'll take from name and put into nickname. I'll delete this and we'll go ahead and compile and execute. And there we are. It fully copies over the array from name one and copies over character by character into nickname two. And this is really just doing the exact same as if we had individually gone through and assigned one character at a time for name one to nickname two, etc. And that's what string copy does. Now we are only wanting to copy over a subset of the name because we're actually wanting to get the nickname. We're really just wanting to get the first four characters so we can have Alex. And there's a function for that. It's called string n copy. And string n copy takes in three parameters the destination, the source, and the third one is how many are we going to copy over. So I'm going to use string length to get name one, the length of name one as how many we're going to copy. So we should be copying over all of Alexander for now. Let's compile and execute. And we do, we copied over the entire Alexander. And now we can subtract from string length how many? One, two, three, four, five. We'll subtract five characters. And when we compile and execute, now we've copied over the nickname Alex. And that's some examples of using some C string functions. Thank you.